All right, so my name is Michael Brooks, uh, MW Brooks on the web. I, what's up? Lasers. Uh, I work uh, at Adobe, per se, Adobe, being with Funkout for about four years now. Um, it's my day job and I absolutely love it. So, to start with, this talk is about a new tool that we built. It's PhoneGap on the command line, which is actually going to be the de facto standard for using PhoneGap apps. So I'm just going to run through some of the work that we've done. My title slide is on the command line, which is pretty cool. Alright, so I think you guys, is that large enough? If I say hello, can you guys see that? Yeah, yeah cool. Alright, so to begin with, the command line is built with Node. Um, so you can actually just do a npm install capital G phone gap. You can do it right now if you want, and it'll go off to the web download version to your phone gap. Um, as we patch it, uh, you can do an npm update dash G on phone gap. You'll get the latest one. If you happen to actually want to use a specific version of phone gap, you can just do an npm install with, say, T9, which we actually have. So, pretty nice just to version switch, that kind of deal. Um, once you actually install it, you can run a series of commands. This is going to be a little ugly on such a high rev or low rev screen, but basically, with a series of commands, you can create your app, you can build your app. Um, the neat part about the PhoneGap CLI is that if you don't have an SDK installed, it'll just use PhoneGap build. So, it gets you up and running really fast, which is quite nice. Um, and then from there you can actually programmatically install plugins as well. So throughout this demo, that's essentially what we're going to do. You can kick off by just typing phone gap and create. I'll create a project called Maya. If we change into that app, it's a pretty standard uh, project that we've decided on. Let's see, I'm going to zoom in for you guys a bit. You can see that there's a www directory, which is where you're going to do all of your dev. Config.xml drives a lot of that, similar to PhoneGap build. So you can basically dump your app in here and just work away. This is just the standard um, Hello World app. Plugins that you can install go into the plugins directory. As we add platforms to build to, the native projects get added to the platforms directory. So if you say, I absolutely hate the command line, I hate this tool, use it to generate your project and then just simply go into the platforms and you're back to a normal phone gap project. Inside there, it'll look like it always has. And you can open up Xcode or open project in the clips, whatever you want. Emerges is something that's emerged over time. Um, you can actually merge platform specific code into your app at build time. So if you've got specific JavaScript files or a special image that you want to replace with the from the default one, you can stick in the merges directory so that um, your Android app has certain Android assets that your other apps don't necessarily have. And the beautiful part about the command line too is that there's actually scripts. You can add scripts for every task, so it can integrate well into your build chain. If you um, actually want to have a pre-build step where you actually maybe compile this or something like that, you can add a script to that. It's also a node module, so if you're using Grunt or other tools like that, you can actually uh, just require phone gap and programmatically use it to integrate well into your own build chain. So you don't necessarily have to use it as your main tool. It should integrate well into whatever you're doing. Um, yeah, basically after we've created a project, if I just run phone gap run iOS, I have the iOS SDK installed, so it's detecting that it's found that SDK. It's actually added the platform. Um, it'll basically load it off the web if it doesn't have it on your system. Compiles it. The run command says, I don't care where you run it, just get the damn thing up. And so it'll try to put it on a device, and if you can't find a device, it'll pick it up to a simulator. Um, but you can also just specify the flag dash dash device or dash dash emulator if you want to force it to one or the other. So there we go. So like two commands, and we can have iOS up and running, which is pretty rad, I think. Yeah. Now, the more interesting part, actually, to start with, I'm just going to remove the WW resource folder. It's seven megabytes of images on splash screen, so I'm just going to remove that. And I'm going to run 
Windows Phone 7 I'm on, on a Mac, I can't actually do that. And so immediately it tries to detect the Windows Phone 7 SDK, it finds that I don't have it, it's going to use the remote service, it says, what the heck is your phone gap bill credentials? This only happens the first time. After that, it'll always remember your credentials. And so, I gotta check the password, correct? Alright, give me a moment to concentrate. There we go. Um, so at this point, it just simply presses your app, picks up the PhoneGap build, um, and then we'll wait for PhoneGap build to upload it, or sorry, build it. Um, you can always go up to PhoneGap build. The app is created up there. It's a brand new app. Um, you could share it with another person. They could collaborate with you on it, um, all that kind of thing. So it's pretty nice. Now, this is going to look absolutely terrible when it's done rendering. Um, but on PhoneGap build, your typical workflow, yeah, there you go. Your typical workflow is to scan a QR code. And so we've actually figured out how to render that thing in your terminal. Oh my God. <laughs> You can uh, just do work right there, which is pretty <laughs> awesome. Now, the last thing that I really want to show you guys is plugins. Um, an important thing that we covered today is that with PhoneGap 3.0, no APIs shit with it. When you build your app, you have absolutely no APIs included. So your app is actually quite a bit slimmer, ideally faster than previously. If you're not using the accelerometer, we don't include that code for you, which is really nice. Everything is now a plugin, and so you actually can programmatically install whichever plugins you want to use. And so in this case, if you go up to github.com slash Apache, you'll see a whole bunch of Cordova-plugin-whatever-accelerometer-geolocation file. Um, in my case, I'm going to choose device because it's super, super simple. I'm going to copy the HTTPS URL to that Git project. And if I actually do PhoneGap local plugin add with that URL, the local is a strange command that I'll cover in a moment. But what it's actually done is it's went off to the web, it's downloaded that plugin, and it's programmatically installed it and added it to the iOS project. If I add Android later on, yeah, this is like a whole program to get the future cost for this. It's been a lot of work to get this going. Um, and then this tool can run on top of it too. And so, the nice part is now we can actually edit, um, say, the JavaScript here. Sorry guys, this is really unreadable. Um, and if I just add a, an alert here for a device.platform, we should be able to see that platform. So if I do a new PhoneGap uh, run iOS, I don't have to edit um, any of the JavaScript includes. We do you know, update the Cordova JS for you, so or PhoneGap JS, which is one you're using. So it should be fine. So now we can actually install a plugin. We've got iOS there, so that's really rad. The beautiful part is now um, a third-party developer can actually just create a plugin, and people can programmatically install it. This idea of reading through this ugly readme and all these minor steps of learning how to use Xcode or Eclipse to add libraries you don't have to worry about. The developer of that plugin can actually describe how it should be installed programmatically, which is absolutely incredible. And likewise, um, if you check out the plugins directory, you'll see where your plugin is actually installed. And so in this case, the plugin is called device. We name spaces so that if someone else creates a better device plugin, um, by all means, you can use that one instead. So I can type PhoneGap local plugin remove that particular plugin and it's now gone. It's out of my project, which is again really nice and really cool. So definitely um, appreciate how that works. So the last thing I want to cover is this local bit. Um, by running PhoneGap run iOS, for example, is detecting which environment. That's a global command run. But if I want to force iOS to use PhoneGap build, I just prefix it with remote. So that I can go PhoneGap remote run iOS. And in that case, it'll actually skip my local system, only use PhoneGap build. And likewise, I could actually do PhoneGap local run iOS, which would actually skip the auto detection and just use my local one. Uh, and we're adding these for each bit. Uh, it makes sense in many ways that you can do PhoneGap remote 
log out, for example, and I would log out of phone down bill. There's no idea of logging out of your local system, so we, we don't do that. And the reason why today there's no PhoneGap plugin end, which will be coming in the upcoming weeks, is that PhoneGap Build hasn't quite finished their work supporting our plugins. They do support third party plugins as of today. They just don't support 3.0 quite yet. They're a few late week or two out. So the moment that they add that support, I can add that global command, and then you can actually just do PhoneGap plugin add device. And it'll add it for the remote service along with the local service. So it's completely transparent um, and quite nice. The benefit of that is that you collaborate with a friend who might be using PhoneGap Build while you are building locally. And you guys can actually work on the same app running the exact same commands. So your build chain tools should work quite well. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's basically it. I'll just do a, a quick bit of architecture and credits. That's, um, that's really the last of this, this deck. It's Check the time. Cool. So the uh, the PhoneGap CLI is actually quite dumb. Um, it, it, it's meant to be dumb in many ways because it depends on much more complex projects. The first is that there's a Node module called PhoneGap Build. And if you want to use that module, you're welcome to. Um, it's purely for PhoneGap Build, but it allows you to create and build projects, generate that QR code that you saw, all those kind of things. So PhoneGap CLI is simply tells that library, um, do this command for me. That library, in turn, falls back on, of course, from get build and from get build express interface. And so, interesting thing is if you actually created your own um, server, or if, especially if you're doing continuous integration, you can match that API and you could um, use these libraries yourself. And then on the other end is Cordova. Cordova does all the work on your local system. And so, we actually have a Cordova CLI. If you want to, you can actually NPM install Cordova instead of PhoneGap or both, but they actually do the same thing, essentially. Um, and so PhoneGap CLI largely just asks Cordova to do all the local system work. And likewise, Cordova CLI stays as dumb as it can, and it relies on all the heavy work of the platforms. Each platform is defined how it creates a project, how it builds a project. And so it's taking responsibility on how things are done. And this is a huge amount of work. And the entire Cordova team um, deserves a lot of credit uh, for coming through with this. It's been a massive amount of work. So I just want to emphasize that the PhoneGap CLI really isn't um, where all the credit lies. It's really down to these bottom layers. And finally, Joe McCann deserves uh, 20 years of credit. You guys all know Joe McCann. Thank you, Joe. Uh, that's it, guys. Enjoy the video. Uh, please download.